where the show is going next. Hey guys, welcome back to The Binger. Orange is the New Black is one of the best shows we've seen in recent years. Stuff has gone down, which will have a major impact on season 7. The final episodes have a lot to live up to. Let's take a look at some of the big events that could make this season all the more interesting. Are there any characters in TV history that have a more complex history than these two? I mean, come on! Who on earth goes to prison with a male fiancé only to reunite with their female ex on the inside? It's the greatest love story that we've ever seen unfurl in a prison setting. That is, of course, unless you count the beautiful bond between Figueroa and Caputo. And that's really just stomach churning. Piper and Alex went through a lot on the outside, but they went through even more on the inside. They've weathered many storms from covering up awful activity to surviving the rigors of life on the inside. When they tied the knot in a prison wedding in season 6, it was a moment fans had been waiting for. It's just a little hard to see where they're gonna go from here. Before Piper's release and pre-wedding, Alex went to great lengths to protect her. She agrees to work with Carol in exchange for Piper's safety. Since Carol and Barbara shuffle off the moral coil in the last episode, there could be an opening for a new leader of the group. As Piper and Alex's romance has been a strong thread throughout the show, fans will want to see that conclusion. Undoubtedly, one of the biggest moments from the entire series happened back at the end of Season 4. Pusey Washington was one of the most intriguing characters on the show. Not only was she kind-hearted and gentle, but she was the BFF of Tasty. The two had a sisterly bond that was purely unbreakable right up to the end. When the inmates at Litchfield decided to have a peaceful protest in the cafeteria, no one could have predicted the outcome. Viewers were lulled into a false sense of security. After all, people don't typically perish during peaceful protests, right? Even if they did, Poussey was such a major character that the thought never even crossed our naive little minds. Guards decided to fight the sit-in demonstration with brute force. In their minds, they were trying to assert control over the inmates. After they busted into the cafeteria, things got heated. Poussey ended up being crushed while a guard was restraining her. This event marked a serious turn in the overall tone of Orange is the New Black in an epic way. No one was more affected than Tasty, who struggled to deal with her friend's passing. As we all know, the riot that later ensued in Season 5 was heavily influenced by these events. Tasty's role in this would later land her in some serious trouble, which leads us to our next entry. At her core, Tasty is a caring person that was dealt a rough hand in life. Her upbringing was terrible, causing her to latch onto an unfavorable role model. Hardly the best mother figure to have in life, right? One bad turn after another sees her land in prison, but she's not a bad person. She wants to do good. She wants things to go well. They just never do. After Pusey's passing at the hands of Correctional Officer Bailey, Caputo defends the officer. Enraged, Tasty and the rest of the black women storm his office and hold him hostage. All she wants is recognition and justice for her friend, but all hell breaks loose and then there's the riot. Her actions, although honorable in many ways, land her in some serious doo-doo come season 6. Cindy has no choice but to rat on Tasty to the officials, and ends up being charged with two counts. One for the elimination of the ill-fated all-round bad guy Correctional Officer Piscatilla, and another for inciting the riot. With the help of an outside organization that has her back, it feels like Tasty has a shot at getting off. It just doesn't work out that way. Tasty's case is a major plotline in Season 6, and it focused on the Black Lives Matter movement. The social injustices that black people face in prison and on the outside are vast, and this show just touched the tip of the iceberg. Given Tasty's devastating guilty verdict at the end of the season, expect to see more of this subject in Season 7. Both Pusey's passing and Tasty's verdict are huge parts of the show. They propel it forward, so don't expect it to stop now. Out of all the characters on the show, Lorna Morello has probably come closest to achieving her dreams. That's pretty impressive considering that she's been locked up for years on end. The Italian-American bombshell lied about having a fiancé, Christopher. 
Morello's story has been all about finding love and overcoming adversity to get it. She starts writing to several pen pals back in season 3 to extort money from him, but something clicks. When a guy called Vince discovers her plan, she opens up to him and the two fall hopelessly in love. By season 5, Lorna is knocked up and preparing to have a baby behind bars. It should have been a fairy tale come to life, albeit a weird one, but this is Litchfield and nothing ever goes to plan. One of the biggest cliffhangers at the end of season 6 was the fate of Morello and her baby. In order to protect her from the planned battle in the kickball field, Nikki hides the expectant mom in the closet. When Nikki has to leave, Morello ends up going into labor in the broom closet. The last time we see her is when Correctional Officer Blake whisks her away to medical. It doesn't look good. Blanca has been the source of many laughs over the course of her development. She looks so intimidating and comes out with these incredible deadpan lines. More power to Laura Gomez, who does a brilliant job with the undeniably tricky role. For the first three seasons, Blanca was a minor role with no major storylines of her own, but from season four onwards, she becomes a force to be reckoned with. By season six, we knew a little bit more about Blanca, namely that she had a slim chance of getting pregnant. Determined to make a baby with her lover Diablo on the outside, she hatches an ingenious plan. The details are way too grimy for us to get into, but it includes artificial insemination. When that plan fails, all isn't lost though. Along with Piper, Blanca gets told that she's going to be released early. Aww, cue the happy tears. A happy Diablo waits at the gates for his girlfriend, but he's left just a little disappointed. Because as soon as Block is released, she's snapped up by immigration police and taken on another bus. Since this show has never shied away from any social or political issues, this could have a deeper meaning. We've all seen the news regarding the detention centers, and it looks like this could be where the show is going next. There's certainly a lot of ground that could be covered here. Orange is the New Black isn't afraid to take a look at the seedy underbelly of anything, let alone real life issues. Watching the relationship between Daya and Bennett unfurl in season 1 was the light relief audiences needed. It was great to believe in a good correctional officer, and one that could see the good in other inmates. Unlike Pensatucky's relationship with Boo, you got the feeling that Bennett really cared about Daya. In fact, not to sound too journey here, but it's more than a feeling. Things soon go south when Daya falls pregnant. And they can't just come clean to Caputo, as Bennett would be charged. Instead, they set up Correctional Officer Mendez to look like the father when Caputo catches him and Daya in a compromising position. Bennett eventually tells Caputo the truth and goes to see Caesar, Diaz's partner. In season three, he disappears entirely, never to be seen again. Their baby goes to live with Caesar too, which isn't ideal. This heartbreak really affects Daya in multiple ways. She's already withdrawn and quiet to start with. Throw in postpartum depression, a mother like hers, and a serious charge, and you've got a recipe for disaster. In season six, Daya latches on to Daddy, a prisoner in the narcotics business. Desperate for an escape from the torment of the guards, Daya starts dabbling in some dangerous substances. So why are we mentioning her baby? That was ages ago, right? Right, but it is a huge part of how Daya got to where she is. Since Bennett left without a trace, many fans think that he could return to visit her in this season. It'll take a miracle to pull Daya out of the situation that she's in, but could Bennett be the one? If anyone could snap her out of it, it'd be him. Fans would go nuts for just one scene where the two hash it out. Will writers give the people what they want? Or will we be left wondering what happened to John Bennett? The jury's still out on this one, but we hope it's a unanimous yes to his return. There's one person that could fix everything for Tasty and Daya. Cindy and Suzanne were both hiding in the bunker in Season 5 when Piscatilla got injured by gunfire. They know that Tasty didn't do it, but they've been coerced into going along with the prison's plan. Cindy wanted to come clean, but she didn't want extra jail time, so she threw Tasty under the bus. Despite Daya attempting to take out Humphrey, he actually perished when Kakudio blew air bubbles into his IV. He didn't meet his maker because of the gunshot wound, but because of the strokes that this caused. Suzanne knows it because she was there, but Daya is clueless. 
It's not really Suzanne's fault that she doesn't tell the truth. Without her medication, she doesn't really know what the truth is. Her mental illness makes her especially vulnerable to the will of the correctional officers. Nevertheless, Suzanne is capable of moments of clarity. Essentially, the fate of both Daya and Tasty lies in her hands. But will the truth ever get out? Actress Danielle Brooks, who plays Tasty, shared her hopes for redemption prior to working on season 7. While she wished someone would come clean, she admitted it felt unlikely. Still, the possibility is there and it hangs in the air like the smell of prison grade bleach. Half the trouble is, if Suzanne were to speak up, she wouldn't be believed. Piper is free. But that doesn't mean that we won't see what happens to the rest of the guys still back in prison. There's a lot of loose ends to tie up here. Season 6 was consumed with the feud between Barbara and Carol. The two sisters had been at each other's throats for decades. Initially thrown in the slammer for drowning their little sister, the two became leaders. Both as ruthless as the other. They had a falling out and went to rule opposing blocks. Everything was supposed to come to a head at the kickball game Piper organized, but it didn't. Instead of the planned attack, the other inmates actually enjoyed the game. Barbara and Carol couldn't let their beef go though and ended up getting rid of each other at the same time. Now that they're gone, there's going to be huge changes. Who will lord over everyone now that those two are gone? Could there be a turf war of different proportions? Badison is always looking for drama, but Alex is rising to the top as well. Then there's Daddy who had a pretty big slice of the action. It's anyone's for the taking. The final season won't see everyone get out of jail. We need to see what life is going to be like for the remaining ladies once it's all over. Will Barb and Carol's reign of terror have set a precedent for how things are going to move going forward? After all, they've run things for so long there's bound to be some sort of weird aftertaste. What event do you think will have the biggest impact on Season 7? Let us know in the comments section down below. Before you go, be sure to give this video a nice big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button with all you got. Until the next time, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.